Hello everyone, welcome to my video photo stories series. Uh, this will be the first one and we'll see how it goes. If it, if uh, they're fun to do and I get get some positive response, well then I'll keep at them. Um, I'll be talking about five of my photographs that were uh, made in, at various times and through the years. And I'll try to keep the commentary down to less than two minutes per picture. So a nice ten minute video or thereabouts. Okay, the first one was uh, shot in Cambodia, in Port Pat, Cambodia, which is um, a border town. And this boy, this young boy, what he's doing is he's hauling goods across the border. The the border there is, um, there's a lot of trade that goes between Thailand and Cambodia. And if you haul it by yourself or with your you know your family or friends or with other workers, you pay less than if it's being pulled by a vehicle. That's why he's pulling it. And in the morning, they'll go, um, the Cambodians will go across with all their goods, some that are unbelievably full, like wagons that are just stacked. Um, and the trucks that do cross are like um, so high that they have to have someone on top to kind of move the wires out of the way as the truck is going through, if there's any hanging wires of any kind. Um, but anyway, so this boy goes across in the morning, comes back at night. I like the harshness of the shot, sort of the almost the 15th century slave-like labor that this poor boy is doing and yet there's sort of a, a beauty to his face sort of a, a kindness to it that i like then the flash accentuates the what i feel is the um the effort he's giving and the and also i love the contrast the high contrast it makes it seem so stark it was made with a bananarama which is a uh, dean jones adapted polaroid camera called a razzle bananarama is the name for the camera because it's yellow uh, Dean, Dean came up with that and um, so it's shot on 4x5 film the Polaroid is adapted to shoot 4 5 with a 135mm lens and flash the problem was of course that it was completely dark and I had to focus this thing while the people were moving quickly through the shot you know I can't you know hold on there stop moving your you know your 500 pound cart so I can fo focus on you they're moving right through right and I'm jumping in front of them taking pictures I shot around 15 um, sheets. This is the only one that turned out. I probably should have shot it with 35. If I ever go back, I'll shoot it with some kind of autofocus 35 or with my Leicas, which will allow me to focus a lot easier in low light and a lot faster. Though the panorama did a good job considering, you know, the extreme conditions I was putting it under. Let's move on to the next picture. Okay, this next photograph is... Um Part of a series I did on sex workers in Thailand, I shot the photographs with an 8x10 camera, um, Kodak Masterview 8x10 camera, and Triax as well as HP5 and the old JNC 400, whatever 8x10 film I could get, because the sheets are so expensive. I was emptying up my freezers, uh, but I my favorite film for this is Triax, the most expensive, of course. But um, so I, I set up a studio in Thailand and did these photographs of um, ladyboy male and female sex workers. This this uh, this uh, photograph uh, is of Gigi, who is a ladyboy sex worker. She I photographed her in 2007 and 2009. Uh, by the time I photographed her in 2009, she um, purchased her own breasts. <laughs> She'd um, got breast implants, which she was very proud of as most lady boys tend to be but um making them making her more feminine which is something um very desirable uh from her point of view the uh photograph uh is which this photograph was shot in 2007 i like the fact that her hands are in the shot and her shoulders are kind of wide and bare because one of the things that lady boys cannot hide they had to have surgeries for cheekbones and adam's apples and they take hormones and you know nose surgeries and breast implants and sometimes they'll cut off everything you know every, every everything that may, used to make them a man sometimes they keep half and half it varies but one of the things that um they cannot they cannot um, do is reduce the size of their shoulders and their hands so i like the fact that her hands are in the shot and they're clasped in a way that accentuates them uh because uh she's trying to be feminine and i'm i i, you know, I don't want to make my goal isn't to make her look unfeminine but i want her to look 
as she looks. I want it, I want the picture to be honest and, and and tell a story about how I feel about her. And for me, what I felt was that she was sort of a mixed person. She was half female, half male. So I wanted to show her feminine side, but also her male side. And in this photograph, I think we accomplished that. Her shoulders are wide. Her her hands are large, um, which shows her male side. But yet she's it's got long hair and she's very feminine and wearing a dress, which is frayed. I also like that aspect of it. The dress is nice, but it's old. Um, she doesn't have a lot of money. She's tr trying to do the best she can. She works as as a, as a prostitute. Um, but you know, there's sort of a vulnerability to her too. A kind of like an uh, I don't know if innocence is the word, but sort of a uh, a beauty to her. A beauty plus a masculinity. So that's the reason I like this photograph a lot. Okay, let's move on. I think I'm going to need to talk a little bit faster as I'm going over my two minutes per print per photograph limit here. So the next three are from the same series. They were shot in Glongtoy Islam, which is in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, and I was working on a series of portraits with a 4x5 camera, a Linhoff, and a 150mm lens for the portraits, and my 35mm Leica, which is usually the Leica M6 with a 28mm f2 lens. So, this lady here, her name was Un. She was 22 years old. And, um, very shy. She was a construction worker, and I was photographing near the boxing gym where I uh, did a series of portraits of Muay Thai boxers. And she was working outside the gym area there anyway, with a friend. And this is the typical gear, even though it's hot as heck. Heck, is that a good word? I think I can think of stronger words in Thailand. But um, they, uh, the Thais will tend to wear all this gear to protect themselves from the sun because they don't, uh, they, the Thais uh, do not like dark skin. Their uh, dark skin is associated with poverty and working in the fields and rich people, nice people with nice jobs have lighter skin supposedly. So they, it, even the Thais that are doing the manual labor will cover themselves usually from head to foot with uh, hats and scarves and even like full ski masks. I've seen um, men working in the fields, in the rice fields in Thailand, wearing a full ski mask like we'd wear in Canada when it's minus 40 and you're out there shoveling snow. Only his eyes and mouth are sticking out. But anyway, this woman was wearing this gear as, as was normal and she was uh, doing some cementing. Um, she had concrete in the bucket and she was pouring the concrete or other. The, um, I asked her to come over and I've always had a little bit more difficulty getting women to pose for me than men. Women, especially Thai women, tend to be quite, depending on, you know, where they work and stuff, um, more shy than the men. So, you know, in the bars, women aren't necessarily terribly shy, but the average Thai woman is, is quite, um, quite shy. So she was giggling with her friends and, uh, with her friend and, Eventually, I kind of coaxed her over, and I posed her up against this wall and set up the uh, lid off and made this photograph of her. She's a sweet lady, from what I could uh, gather, and uh, it's a good memory for me. I like the kind of casualness of her stance, the you know, kind of the feminine, um, feminine. Um, you know, body position, feminine, um, the way she's kind of dainty, but still, um, she's working a very hard job, harder job than I work in Canada, physically very demanding, but she still has that kind of that little, um, swing to her hips and a little, little grin on her face. Uh, nice, nice portrait. One of my first uh, four by five portraits for the Kwang Doi, um, project where I shot full figure. Uh, I tended to shoot a lot of close-up shots, but this is when I uh, started to get me to love to shoot uh, full-figure images that include more of the environmental background. 
The next photograph is of an old man who I um, photographed uh, for about half an hour. His name was Udom. 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 He was 70 years old. Um, Udom lived in an area of the slum that I found out later was quite dangerous. After I'd photographed in the slum in that area, I walked with my 4 or 5 camera on a tripod to another area. And the people in the second area told me not to go to the first area where I'd just been <laughs> because it was dangerous and someone might steal my camera. Luckily, that didn't happen. Um, but when I was f uh, photographing Udom, um, at one point, a young boy who was high on something came up to me and started asking for money. He wasn't that young. He was about 22. Kind of the street tough, I think, in that area. Because once he started talking to me, everyone else that I'd been talking to previously backed right down, mostly older men. Udom was one of those. He just his, he just shut right up when this, guy, when this guy showed up. And I ended up taking this guy aside and explaining the situation. And I gave him a little bit of money, not too much. I gave him, I think, about $3. And that was enough to pacify him. You know, when you're carrying that much in camera equipment, I probably had four or $5,000, maybe more in camera equipment on me. Uh, it's just try to relax the person who's who's high on whatever he's high on and get out of there. So that's what I did. But when I was photographing Udon before this happened, before this street tough, <laughs> somehow doesn't sound very intimidating, before this drug guy showed up, he was um, very outgoing and I photographed him for, like I said, about 15 minutes. I was really fascinated with his glasses and his face. He had such a worn look to him and he had tattooing. I also did a shot of his back, which was uncovered in tattoos, which, which I'll maybe show you in another story. Um, just a really frail man, but very friendly and uh, very photographic because of his age. I find that men generally are more interesting to photograph than women um, for these kind of portraiture, especially as they age. Uh, the men just become really Sean Connery like, very, very um, strong featured that works very well in portraiture. And the final image of the day here that I'm going to show you is a photograph of a, a man named O who's 30. Um, I love his tattoos. His tattooing was, was quite extensive. Now he was a very friendly person to me. Um, he had I love on one of his arms in English and the rest of it was intent to, to uh, like tie writing and a lot of the tattooing is Buddhist related. It's it's like protective tattooing and and I've heard stories about how if you have this kind of tattoo or that kind of tattoo supposedly bullets can't penetrate your skin and you can't be harmed in other way they're like good luck and all this all this sort of stuff but I love this tattooing especially against this um, metal fence kind of rusted metal fence that was behind him and he's also wearing a uh, I think it's a Buddha uh, pendant around his neck which is um, typical of Thai people they'll, they'll do that so I thought he was very graphic and very uh, I liked his, the intensity of his eyes too and he was just hanging out in, a, in an area of the slum where I photographed uh, a lot of people that were drinking and stuff if you look at my uh, video on the opening of the the train is coming show the opening night video there's a small snippet of of another man named a who i uh, photographed um in that same area uh whether the guys just stood around and drank all day so that's my um short little video i don't know how short it's a little longer than i expected i hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.